I'd like to welcome everyone to our 2018 Veterans Day ceremony. Today is a day that we recognize all our veterans and service members for their service. At this time, we'd like to have a moment of silence for the end of World War I, which was on the 11th day of the 11th month at 11 o'clock. At this time, we'll have an invocation prepared uh, by Matt Harm, our American Legion State Chaplain. <clears throat> Thank you. In this prayer, you're going to notice I'm going to give acknowledgement to all the Americans that tried to serve our country but could not because of some reason, the 4-H health problems, the family, etc. Also, the ones that are our supporting staff, like our auxiliaries that support the veterans and pray for us and help us raise money to support the veterans. Also, if you ever heard of Blue Star Mothers, them. Also, the women that serve coffee and donuts on the front line called the Donut Dolls. But um, in this prayer, you're gonna hear this. So please just bow our heads, take our caps off. Appreciate it very much. Heavenly Father, as we gather during this day, we recognize all veterans, those that suffer from wars, the sick, or have gone to the final home. We give them honor and continue to pray for all our veterans. We acknowledge the Army with the National Guard, the Marines, the Navy with the Seabees, the Air Force, the Coast Guard. We also acknowledge all the military supporting organizations like the Blue Star Mothers, the Donut Dolls, the Nurses, and all the auxiliaries, we also cannot forget all of the support of our Americans. With our military, we can still gather freely. We worship freely and live without tyranny. To all those that have gone the extra mile to serve and protect, we the people of America, to those that gave up part of their life for us all, to those that put off their future marriage and to build their legacy, we thank you, we thank you, this is your day. Remember that without our omnipotent God and Father, nothing is allowed or can be done. So with praise and the ultimate thank you, Lord, thank you for what you have done. May you continue to, continue to bless the United States of America. In Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Matt. At this time, we'll have Lincoln High School Band lead us with the National Anthem. Color Guard, Ted Hunt, present war. Now we have three students from Emmanuel Lutheran that will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. They are Lauren Sillinger, uh, J.T. Schlafer, and Ben Anderson.
Let's celebrate the privilege of being an American and the joy of living in this beautiful country. Always treat the U.S. flag with honor and respect. Please take off your hats and put your hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to this public religious sense, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order, order, great drill. Thank you. Is Leon, Sch Leon Schmidt? <coughs> our guest speaker today is our attorney, Leon Schmidt. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Leon Schmidt. I'm a member of Post 9 of the American Legion of Wisconsin Rapids. World War I began during the last few days of July 1914. France, Great Britain, and their allies on one side faced the empires of Germany, Austria-Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire of Turkey on the other. Most people in those countries thought their side would win the war quickly certainly by Christmas. By November 1918, four years later, 18,356,000 Allied soldiers had been killed or wounded. 12,774,000 soldiers of the Central Powers had been killed or wounded. America tried to stay out of that European war but America was compelled to join the war in April of 1917. By August of 1918, America had sent about two million soldiers and other personnel to Europe at the rate of 10,000 a day since early January of 1918. By November of 1918, 320,000 American soldiers had been killed or wounded in those eight short months. 100 years to ago today, at 11 o'clock this morning, or in the morning, the guns fell silent and an armistice was declared. The German Empire and its allies had been defeated. It was a victory of democracies over anti-democratic monarchies, that had become military dictatorships during the war. The attempt of the German Empire to take control of Europe was defeated, but at a terrible cost. Twenty years later, in 1939, the nationalistic regimes of Hitler's Germany and the Empire of Japan once again plunged the world into war. Again, America tried to stay out of the war but in December 1941, America was bombed into the war again. This time, there were a total of 25 million military deaths, 30 million civil, civilian deaths. This includes 407,000 American military deaths. Since that war ended, America has had to go to war again in Korea, in Vietnam, and the Middle East. Those world wars were the wars of our great-grandparents, our grandparents, and our parents. The wars in Korea, Vietnam, and the Middle East are the wars that the veterans that are here today were the men and women that fought. By March, of 1950, by March 15 in 1919, four months after the World War I ended, in this, the American soldiers 
that were st still in Paris, France, founded the American Legion. A few months later, in the summer of 1919, the first American Legion post was in Wisconsin Rapids was established. Today, there are over two million members of the American Legion. The American Legion has long supported programs for veterans. The American Legion was instrumental in creation of the U.S. Veterans Bureau, now known as the Department of Veterans Affairs. The Legion wrote the original draft of the Veterans Readjustment Act, which we all know as the GI Bill. The Legion has also created institutions for our families and our children here. American Legion created the American Legion Baseball, which is active here in Wisconsin Rapids. The American Legion created the first boy state, which continues as Badger Boy State and Girl State. American soldiers are defending us 365 days a year. They are stationed all over the planet. While we are home with our families at Thanksgiving and Christmas, our soldiers are in Afghanistan, Iraq, Japan, the world's ocean and bases all over Europe and America. They deserve our support. And when they are wounded or sick, they deserve to be healed and cared for. When they finish their period of service, they deserve our help and assistance. Uh, to them to return to productive lives at home. We are here today to recognize the service and sacrifice of our soldiers and veterans, as well as all those soldiers who have never returned and their families, our soldiers who are still missing in action or imprisoned in far off lands cannot be forgotten. Programs to support our veterans must be maintained. Hospitals to care for our soldiers and veterans have to be supported. Today, a day to commemorate the end of a war which embodied one of the worst periods of carnage in human history is a day on which to remember and recognize those young men and women we have sent to war to fight our battles. Those young soldiers, sailors, Marines, airmen, nurses, and others that we send to war are not the people who declare our wars. They are simply the people we send into harm's way to defend us. They deserve our recognition and support. Veterans have given us freedom, security, and the greatest nation on earth. God bless you all for being here. God bless our veterans, and God bless America. Thank you, Leon. At this time, our three students from uh, Emanuel Lutheran will do some readings for us. My name is Lauren and I am a student of Emanuel Lutheran School. How Old Glory got its name. Old Glory was the nickname of a specific U.S. flag owned by Sea Captain William Driver. He named it Old Glory upon seeing it flying on its ship's mast in 1831. Driver's flag is said to have survived multiple attempts to deface it during the Civil War. The flag is a primary artifact at the National Museum of American History. In 1873, Captain Driver said, This is my old ship flag, Old Glory. I love it as a mother loves her child. Take it and cherish it as I have always cherished it, for it has been my steadfast friend and protector in all parts of the world, savage, heathen, and civilized. God bless America. My name is JT and I am a student of Emanuel Lutheran School. Thank you to all who serve or have served to defend freedom. In, in 1892, James B. Upham and Francis Bellamy wrote the Pledge of Allegiance. On 1942, in 1942, the pledge received recognition by Congress. In 1954, the phrase, under God, was added. 
what the flag repu represents. In 1777, the Second Con Continental Congress passed the flag resolution. It is resolved that the flag of the United States be made of 13 stripes, alternated red and white, that the Union be 13 stars, white in the blue, in the blue field, representing a new constellation. Between 1777 and 1960, Congress passed several acts of ch that changed the shape, design, and arrangement of the flag that allowed stars and stripes to be added to the reflect of the mission of each new state. Today's flag has 50 stars and 13 stripes. These colors are symbolic. Red symbolizes hardiness and valor. White symbolizes purity and innocence. And blue represents vigilance and perseverance and justice. My, my name is Benjamin Anderson, and I'm a student at Emanuel Lutheran School. Preamble to the Constitution, signed in Convention September 17, 1787, ratified June 21, 1788. We, the people of the United States, in order to in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, to provide for the common defense, promote the general warfare, and secure the blessings of liberty. To ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Thank you to Lauren, JT, and Ben. At this time, uh, the Lincoln High School Band will play Lest We Forget.
At this time, we'll have Matt Harn give us a benediction. Thank you. <clears throat> and now, dear Heavenly Father, as we go our separate ways, we ask Thee to help us and guide us through all the coming days. Be with us and safe, safely lead us down the service road. We thank you, Lord, for your loving care. We know you will help to lighten our load. We truly thank you, Father, for your blessings and all the memories that we will never forget. As we pray for the sick, we sit with the wounded and encourage the poor. Go with us as we part to celebrate with the veteran their day. We will continue to respect all veterans, not just this day, but every day. When we finally are home and think of this day, oh please Lord, burden us to pray for the thanks and hope and love. In Christ Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. At this time, I'd like to thank Chaplain Harn, Lincoln High School Band, the Emanuel Lutheran students, VFW 2534, VVA Chapter 101, DAV Chapter 55, American Legion Post 9, and the American Legion Writers. After this uh, ceremony, Post 9 will open up on their clubhouse for a free chili on Love Street off First Street North until the Wood County Memorial Ceremony at the Courthouse at 1 o'clock. Also, uh, tomorrow, the VFW Post 2534 will have a spaghetti feed from 4 to 7 at their clubhouse. Thank you. Now you can go home and warm up. And thank everyone for attending. <laughs>